reflecting the glory. And then Samuel 12, uh, sorry, 2 Samuel 6, 12 to 15. 2 Samuel 6, 12 to 15. So let's go together. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord had blessed the house of Obedidom and all that pertained unto him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obedidom into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they, they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six phases, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was gathered with a linen effort. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of a trumpet. Someone whom I had so many know. Tinsia, making kind dream you know, could see Dunum. Now, what catch you a day with the say? A radiation or bedded on fear, need it, need dear or won't you now? Yankupon at the canoe tea. Now, they would cock or fire Yankupon at the canoe free or bedded on fear, the bad day with chromo and Nijemu. Now, so one hour was so a radi at the canoe to two anamon in Sia ah, or the name Chiani Abua ah, what door bought a for dear. Now, they would dinner who are dinner sigh. What a radiant name, and so not do it. The Nura, I saw for I saw I saw for a tadia and mea. Now, they would need Israel fear you now. The Osebo, Nature to go to to men to shine the Eradi Ada cannot fro by. Amen. Father God, we thank you for a time like this. We pray, oh God, for grace to minister. We cannot do without you. We ask for unction to function. And we pray, O oh God, that you write your words on the tablet of our hearts and grant us grace to be doers of the same. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Amen. And so, experiencing the glory of God. This year is our year of glory. But for your information, not everyone in the house will experience that glory. It is those who believe and trust and prepare their hearts to experience the glory. They are the ones who will experience it. And God expects that we take certain steps in life. And those are the steps that will lead us to experiencing that glory. As we look at the story of David bringing the ark of God back to Jerusalem, this story is mixed with failure, judgment, and restoration. The first one resulted in death and then also public embarrassment. But the second attempt in bringing the ark of the Lord resulted in the glory of Amen. God and Amen. manifestation of the power and Amen. praise to God. But before, you know, going deep into it, we need the background to that story. The wicked sons of Eli, who was the priest, had taken the ark of God and taken it into battle. Thinking that the ark of God was a magic wand, one that could cause things to happen. You know, some people have different notions about, you know, elements and totems and symbols. But those things are not 
magical ones to be used. Those things are not magical ones to be used to manipulate God. Manipulate God. And so the wicked sons of Eli thought they could use that act to do something and win the battle. And so Unfortunately, they were carrying the wrong thing. But he that carried the vessel of the Lord must be holy. These people were not holy people. And for you to carry the glory and experience the glory, you must lead a holy life. And people think that because you, you receive a message from God and your life is anyhow, you will experience it. No! And so they went to this battle and 30,000 men died, including the wicked sons of Eli. And when Eli himself heard of the defeat in battle and the death of his own son, he had a heart attack and died. So for penny tea, cook way, nini padu a woo, and he may come in, Nakuma, at tea, and oh, yeah. And around that time, Eli's daughter in law was pregnant and was in labor. Sabreno, Nasso for penny Eli, Nasseba, no onion, our awa camel. But she also died through labor. On also a semi tea, oh, yeah, a woo, but the baby survived. And so I'm a friend of your woman, or can I say, baby was named Ichabod. You know, in recognition of the tragic event that happened, I said, glory is simply, um, simply kabod. The word kabod is glory. But when you say ikabod, that it means the glory has departed. When the glory departs from you, when the favor of God departs from you, when the hand of God is not going with you, life becomes more difficult. No wonder Moses said, until you go with me, I'm not prepared to go. So we need the glory. But the glory must reside in an earthen vessel. The glory must reside in a holy vessel. The glory departed. I pray that you will, you, the glory will not depart Amen. in your life, but you Amen. will experience Amen. the glory Amen. this particular year. So for so bomb my set on your many money win giant. Now fimu, you be won your many money can sit. And so the Philistine took the glory, the ark of the covenant for a brief period. And see, obi edgy a pamada. The Philistines. After they defeated, they captured the ark of God. And when the ark was in their possession, they they began to experience tumors and diseases and all sorts of problems. So, in fact, as I continue to repeat, not anyone can carry that glory. So they were having problems. So they sent it back to Israel. To the house of Abinadab. Abinadab didn't have any strong relationship with Jehovah. And so it was with him for 20 good years. And nothing happened. Beloved, you may accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but if you don't do the things that are required from you, you may be call yourself a born again, tongue talking, Holy Spirit baptizer, spirit filled. You may call, give yourself titles, but it will amount to nothing. So,
When David decided to go for the ark. Tidakro, oh he need David can say me kwako pa adaka yi. And then there was a parade. And now a soldier for so no mutu santen eye no wo ye bi. He was in royal apparel. Share na him for atade and there was fanfare all over the place. Wo di asa to nyom celebration. No mu achi mu mu me and they went for the ark. They put the ark on a cart. Driven by an ox. And it was being driven. But the ox shook it a little bit. And it shifted. And so a man by name Uza decided to save the ark. So he touched it. And instantly he died. So it was a failure. Not only the death of Uza, the celebration was cut short. The fanfare ended over there. And it was so much pain in David's heart. Because he had a good intention. But it was not done God's way. You may have a good intention. But whatever you do must be God's way. Whatever we do must be dictated by the ways of God. And we seek the face of God and seek the plan of God and seek the will of God. The glory of the Lord will be revealed in our lives. David was sad. And this was transported to the man by name Obed Edom. And for three months, the man began to prosper. Hey, I declare that the glory will cause your prosperity in the name of Jesus. The glory will open, will, will give you an open heavens in the name of Jesus. I see you experiencing that glory. I see you experiencing that power. I see you experiencing a fresh anointing in your life. I see the glory of the Lord being revealed in your life. I see the power of God coming upon you in a special way because you are carrying the glory. You are carrying Emmanuel. You are carrying the King of Kings. Sir. You are carrying the Lord of Lords. You have Jesus Christ in your heart. And as you carry the glory, and as you carry Jesus, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment shall be condemned. Because the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon you. And no demon will be able to stand that glory. No power will be able to stand that glory. I tell you, you are carrying a greater glory. Because you have Jesus inside your spirit. You have Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So you you have Jesus you overshadowing your life. Christ Jesus. You For Jesus in you. Yes, you can. He is the hope of glory. And, and if you, you carry, Jesus, you carry Jesus, 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 if you carry baby Jesus, Christ, if you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you are carrying a heavy load. Another word for glory is heavy. You are, you are a heavyweight. You are weighty. You are so weighty. The devil is lighter before you. Because you are carrying the glory. You are carrying the power. You are carrying the anointing. See yourself as such. That the glory of God is upon you. The anointing of God is upon you. The spirit of God is upon you. People may not experience it. But you will experience it. Because you know that Jesus in you. Is the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Obedidom. Prosper. You will prosper because of the glory. You will prosper because of the favor. This is your year of glory. Your life will be transformed. Your life will be metamorphosed. Your life will be glorified. Your life will bring honor to God. Amen. Amen. And David 
He decided that Obed Edom should not be the one, the only one to prosper. And I've seen the secret of his success. I've seen why he's prospering. And I don't want it only for Obed Edom. I want the prosperity for myself. And for the whole of Israel. Israel The nation must prosper. I was a man in a de as a nation if we acknowledge Jesus. Set on my Christo to Jesus near my Christo Quine and his kingdom. Then I hear near rail in our life as a nation. Set a bit de and so what a man and allow the governance of God in our lives. Now a man boy at the Christo Kahua. Prosperity will be a portion. Oh, poverty will be taken away. Favor will be taken away. Sickness and disease will be taken away because of this glory of God upon our lives. May we seek for that glory. May we look for that glory. May we experience that glory. And may the favor of God be our portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. But this time, you want to do it right. Sab, bread here. He wants to do it God's way. Things done. According to God's way, and God's will will bring success. The first thing I want to talk about is knowledge and application of the word. Knowledge and application of the word. I may have the knowledge that if I take this ice kinky, ice kinky, so for say ice kinky yara. I will not die. Or would you dare say, Oh, no, no, oh, because I'm about to die. Every semi baby woo due to hunger. And now I'm a common tea. But if I eat ice cake, that's why I'm not ice cake. I will not die. Me woo. What will happen to me if I don't eat the ice cake? Some are no more than a bayer me. What will happen to me if I don't eat the ice cake? Man, yeah, then a bayer me. So it's not about knowledge. And so when you know, you know, but you need the knowledge. But it's also about the application of yes, that knowledge. So, so what did David the king do? He began to set the scriptures. Set the scriptures. The promises of God concerning the ark. How the ark should be carried. What should happen to the ark? How to treat the ark? Of of the ark. He was searching. How many of us search the scriptures? In our homes, how many of us search the scriptures? We have more time for the internet than the word of God. We have more time for other things. We have more time for the social media. Ask yourself how many hours do you spend on WhatsApp? WhatsApp? How many hours do you stay on Facebook and Facebook Twitter and Instagram and all those places? Any Twitter. It's, it's good. There is nothing wrong with all those things. But the word of God is paramount. That is God's voice to you. The word of God tendereth. The word of God is powerful. To me, woman. Thy word is so powerful. This world was created with the word of God. I will watch over my word to perform. And so the word of God is so important. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. As you are eating your natural food. Think also about the word of God. Do I feed my spirit with the word? And after feeding my spirit with the word, do I apply the word? So it's not just the knowledge, but the application of that knowledge. May God give us a hunger for his word. That we yearn for his word. Who spend time and eat the word of God. He searched the scriptures and he found out that you cannot put that ark of covenant on a cart. That was a worldly attempt. Yeah, that was a worldly attempt. It's not scriptural. You, 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 you cannot do that because that's what the Philistine did. 
That's how they carried it. And sometimes Christians want to copy the world. Musicians want to copy the world. Others people want to copy the world. We are not authentic. We don't receive some things from God. But if we seek the face of God and seek the will of God and seek the purpose of God and align ourselves with the will of God, we will experience the glory in a special way. No, he saw the face. He saw the face of the through the study and application of the word. And he said, number one, the kind. The priest should be the only one to carry. And they should carry it on their shoulder. That was instruction. They should put it on their shoulder. Not on a cart. So he was outside the will of God. Beloved, when you are outside the will of God, the enemy will begin to trouble you. But when you are in the perfect will of God, rejoice. No matter the, the affliction, no matter the temptation, no matter what you go through, you are aligned with God. And God is behind you. When you are in the will of God, He will back you, He will defend you, He will be with you, He will support you, He will defend you. Put the word of God. The second thing he talked about that the priest must be sanctified. That was the search he did. That was the search he did. So number one, knowledge and application of the word. And number two, glorify God in our lives. That has to do with the sanctification. A life of holiness. A life of sanctity. A life of purity. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having the seal. Let those who name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Amen. The sons of silver told they could lead anyhow, lead their love anyhow, and still experience the power. And the demons made a mess. And so our lives must bring glory. We must be sanctified. We must lead a life of holiness. Number one. How do you treat your wife? You treat your wife like the way you want to be treated. Do you treat your husband like the way you want to be treated? There is purity in your home. Holiness in your own home. How do you treat your own children? You tell them your head is like a ban. How do you treat your own children? How do you treat your parents? Very, very important. You cannot just live anyhow and experience to, 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 to you know, use the glory as a magic wand. It won't work. Number three. Don't be putting, oh, so far as so far, pour the oil on me, my problems are gone. You are deceiving yourself. I, I could give you a dream go, fry tall, and everything. It won't work. Number four. 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 Do you have envy in your heart? When you envy someone who, who is being promoted. And that is what means that you will never experience the blessing. Because someone is being successful and you are not happy. How will you succeed? How will you prosper? Envy. 
If you want to see, see sin, don't go outside. Ghana, we are told we are 70% Christian. But the thing that happened in our nation is terrible. Husband, you are married to a woman. Going behind your wife, mistreating her. Now, is that what you would like when you are treated that way? Wives, are cheating on your husband? Following after your former boyfriend. Now do not A life of holiness. A life of purity. The way we talk. The way we talk. We don't respect people. We talk to people anyhow. We look down on others. Because they are not at our level. You are not humble. I'm, I am not humble. How will God bless me? How will God show himself strong on my behalf? How will God be glorified in my life? I have a haughty heart. My life is so prideful. People are under me, so I treat them like, like, like something. Even at the workplace, you say you are a Christian, but people are not seeing Christianity. Look at the way you mistreat people at the workplace. Holiness. Holiness, 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 may God help us, may Jehovah help us, and so the knowledge and application of the word, glorify God in our life through sanctification and holiness. And the last thing David did, but I'll say the last one is giving God all the glory. During the first time of bringing the Ark of the Covenant, he dressed in royal apparel. There was fanfare. It about human beings elevating themselves. And it was about themselves. It wasn't about God. It wasn't about Jehovah. But this time round, David was so humble. He was in a common priest's apparel. And the whole focus was on God. If God knows that you take the glory, you will not experience it. In the when Herod took the glory, when he was dressed in royal apparel, diamond and sparkling and everything in that apparel, when people say, say you are God we are God instead of saying I am not God <laughs> he accepted it and instantly he was slain by God God said take not the glory take not the glory I share my glory with no one God does not share his glory with anyone. And that's why God can just take someone from the lowly place and elevate that person. So that he alone will be glorified. So, so that you know that it's not by the might of God. It's not he that is swift or he that runneth, but it is God who shows mercy. It is just by the grace of God that you are where you are right now. It's not because you are wiser than someone. It's not because you are more beautiful or more handsome than somebody. Beloved, learn to give God the glory. Learn to not take that glory. When I decided to be 
in ministry. Sorry. Sorry. I read Ora Roberts book. And a statement he made, he said, touch not the girl. Touch not the gold. And touch not the glory. Touch not the girl. Touch not the gold. Touch not the glory. So, as a servant of the Lord, you must be careful about money. Because money could lead you into trouble. Before, before you realize, as a pastor, you have become a travel agent. Before you realize you are a pastor, you are now selling lands everywhere. And you are doing certain certain businesses that does not befit you. Be careful with money. Money. Touch not the gold. Touch not the girl. If you are a humanizer. So you Don't even go into ministry at all. Don't try. Don't go. Don't go there. If you like women, women, women. Or you like men, 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 men. Hey, don't go into ministry. Because that thing and ministry don't go together. And the last one, he said, touch not the glory. As human as we are, sometimes we want to take credit for achievements. It's okay to take credit. But when it comes to the work of God, it's not by might, neither by power, neither by any strength. It is just by the grace of God. If it is a gift, then why do you boast? If God has given you that gift, then why do you boast? Where is the boasting for? If it God gave you a gift and you know you did not work for it, where is the boasting? Why should we boast? If God has given you a gift, why should you allow pride to overshadow you that you don't respect anybody? God has given you money. It's a gift. Ah, it's a gift. Learn to give him glory. Don't say, because I am wise. Because of my intelligence. Because of my acumen, business acumen. Because of the strategies I've been able to formulate for my life. And sometimes you go to motiv- uh, those who motivate people. Six keys to success. 20, 25 principles for breakthrough. 51 uh, manifestations yeah, for this and that. Without God, it won't happen. If God does not come to your aid, you will use all the keys and nothing will happen. So if God has helped you, if God has defended you, if God has been with you, take not the glory. Take not the glory. The glory alone belongs to God. If you sing and someone tell you, oh, it was awesome, it will tell them, glory to God. But some people, when they say glory to God, but in their heart. Because we don't deserve to be used. By God. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve it, oh. We don't deserve. God told David, You want to build me a house? No, you can't build me because your hands are What, you? what can we do for God? Unless God decides to use us. Unless God decides to use us. When Satan was lifted up in, in hell, in heaven. I want to be like the most high. Me too, I want to be like this. I want to be like that. And you are carrying some air of importance around you. And you think it's of God. That air should be air of humility. Whatever air I'm carrying should be air of humility. And not, pride. not to glory in myself. Not to glory in my achievement. 
this church, I always say, I always say, yourself with trouble come down. I'm always not satisfied for what we are achieving. Sometimes I feel down. But in my mind, I think the church is not growing. Because my vision of growth is too much. What I want to see, see is too much. But as I always say, even the little little things we see God do in our lives in the church is just by the grace of God. It's just by the grace of God. I have no part in it. I have no part in it. I have played no role in it. It is the Jehovah God. It's Jehovah God. It is He who is able to. Give us even the willingness to do what we do. And we have to learn to give him the glory. Never take the glory. Never take the glory. Never take the glory. Shall we please stand?